Uh, we're going to fire right up this morning with news you can use. And I'm going to do a little bit different news you can use. I'm going to kind of do a little monologue, dialogue type thing and tell you about some observations that I have recently uh, come to a conclusion on. Uh, for those of you who have talked, listened to me before, you know I've been in this business for a long time. Uh, it started in 1999 in this industry, so 23 years plus, 20, 23 plus years uh, in the business. And I've been through about four down cycles. Uh, it's it's very interesting. I've, I've seen the ups, I've seen the downs, and I've seen them multiple times. We've got something going on out there in the market right now that I have never seen before, and it's extremely unique, and I think it could put a lot of profit into everybody's pocket uh, who's with us today and knows what to do. Frankly, I wish when I had started, I had the knowledge that I now do today, and I would encourage all of you guys to take advantage of uh, you know, the information that we can share because of our experience, Blair, myself, uh, et cetera. Uh, we can help you kind of see around these corners and see where there's some opportunities. Specifically, uh, there is a golden opportunity that, once again, I've never seen before, and it's the fact that properties out there today come with a uh, profit in them because they all have a, a ton of equity. But most of these properties were bought five, six years ago or longer. And they all have equity now as a result of the market incline that we've seen over the last five, six years in particular. And B, they generally have cheap interest rates on them. I've never seen both of those things happen at the same time. Now, how's that help you? Well, uh, if you can get a property subject to or with some seller financing, it more than likely has uh, equity or profit in the property itself on, uh, on day one, and it has cheap loans. Now, when you go back to the 2008 recession, uh, there was a lot of properties that had a lot of equity in them, but almost none of them had cheap financing. They came with expensive financing. So you could buy a property subject to during that period of time, but you couldn't do a lot with it in terms of an exit strategy other than sell it for cash. So for example, a lot of the properties that we got subject to, we turned right around, and this would be in 2006, during kind of the heyday, right before the crash, uh, properties that we bought subject to frequently had six figures of profitability in them, but they couldn't be uh, long-term financed out as an exit strategy. In other words, you couldn't do lease option, you couldn't really do a rent because frequently the payments that were being made with the underlying loan were higher than the, the uh, either average mortgage at that time or more specifically the rental rates at that time. Uh, today, we've got high rental rates, we've got low interest, and we've got a lot of equity in these things. And so when you get a property today subject to, you're going to have instant profit, at least on, a, on paper, which you could turn around and sell for cash. Uh, you've also got a low payment generally because of the low interest rates over the last several years. And you could turn around and do a lease option, uh, make a, a decent chunk of equity. It's a perfect storm for this because We've got a lot of buyers out there who couldn't get a house uh, up to now because of the shortage of available housing. And then also more recently, like in the last two, three months, because interest rates have inclined from say two and a half, 2.6 to now over 5% for the government back loans. Uh, there are a, a lot of buyers on the sidelines that can no longer afford those payments that were made. So you can you could buy something today, you could sell it for cash, you could buy something today subject to, and you could sell it on a lease option. You could buy something today subject to, and you could put it in your rental fleet. Uh, you, you've got a myriad of exit strategies as a result of this perfect storm that we've seen uh, prior to today. Um, frankly, if you're gonna, I'd focus most of my efforts on buying subject to, uh, if you can at least, identify and focus on that uh, opportunity, that tranche, that slot, I would definitely do that because like I said, you've got multiple exit strategies. Today, if you were to pay cash for a house, your only exit strategy is really to sell it for cash. You know, that would be to fix it up and sell it for cash. <clears throat> you can buy it subject to, you've got a lot of things you can do with it. You don't have to make an immediate decision and you've got property, you've got profit booked in. Uh, at that point. So I would definitely focus on buying subject to or it was seller finance with a low interest rate carry. Uh, it's a great way to not only bolster your balance sheet, but to bolster your cash flow for the next several years. I don't see, by the way, I don't see rents going down. 
I think rents are going to continue to go up um, because of the shortage of houses. Uh, you guys know the, the drill people who own houses and get into financial trouble generally have to, when they lose their house, they go to a rental house. And from a rental house, if their income dries up, they'll go to an apartment. From an apartment, they'll go to a mobile home park. And from a mobile home park, they'll live in grandma's basement. And so that's kind of the general transition of things. And you're seeing that happen out there, this pancaking, this stacking of exit strategies for homeowners who can't afford. And, and let's, let's be clear, there are a ton of homeowners out there right now who are either behind on their payments or behind on their forbearance agreement payments, these kind of things, where they stumbled a couple of years ago during COVID and they have not been able to catch up since. They're not going to be able to hang on to those houses. If you're a bank and you've got a loan out there for 3%, 3.5%, and your, your borrower has not made a payment for a year, is behind 14 months, something like that, that what they want to do is they want to get to that exit strategy for themselves as quick as possible. In other words, they want to foreclose on that property and they want to immediately take that house back, pay off that cheap loan, and then loan that money back out by selling that house. They'll loan that money and that cash back out at a higher interest rate. So it's, it is a, like I said, a perfect storm for you to buy in right now. And it's a perfect storm for you to sell in. It's, I haven't seen it this good uh, in terms of uh, transactional engineering, multiple ways to buy, multiple ways to sell in a long time. You're not limited to one or two strategies. You can do everything across the board. So I would definitely keep my eyes open for prop property that is falling behind, uh, owners of houses, sellers of houses who are behind in payments. They're, they're out there at a lot larger level than you would think. There's a, a big shadow. There's a big cliff of people who can't afford their payments, either once again, because they missed it during COVID and they haven't been able to catch up or because of other financial circumstances that haven't allowed them to uh, continue to make those payments on time. So keep your eyes open for that stuff. It's, it's golden goose. If you can grab one or two or 10, get them. All right, that's news you can use for today.